in conjunction with ASEM MOOC stakeholders meeting. I, I, I have to explain the reason why we, the KMOOC, suggest uh, these two events uh, get combined. So as you may know, uh, the ASEM education process is, is kind of uh, multi-level dialogue pl platforms, ASEM educational me meetings, and also it is a platform for the exchanges, and I exchanges of ideas in the field of education among the ASEM partner countries. And also, uh, ASEM education process paved the way for the enhancement of mutual understanding and cooperation between Asia and Pacific. But it has some, uh, not problem, but uh, it has weak weaknesses. So, uh, ASEM educational meetings is dialogue platform. So, it has, it has not uh, focused on the practical, substantive uh, corporations. So we have that kind of uh, sense of problems. And also, the second one is MOOC-based exchange and corporations in Asia can be an important block uh, for innovations in higher education uh, across ASEM regions. So the Nile and the Ministry of Education, the Republic of Korea, uh, propose the ASEM MOOC uh, network, ASEM network of MOOC initiatives. So this is a is kind of background for our proposals. So what impacts today's educational environment? We can pick up two important trends. The first one is social innovations, and the second is social change. So just you look at the now, our society, society has become more knowledge-based and virtualized and hyper-connected society. And on the other hand, the unprecedented speed of technological in innovations like a push the higher education institutions to adopt new technology or something. So thus, providing opportunities for quality education and lifelong learning for all is, has gained more importance than ever before. And just look at the data of the current status of education in ASEM regions. Uh, we, we, uh, we just focused on two aspects. The first one is uh, gross enrollment ratio in ASEM regions, and the other one is adult literacy. So as we look at these two data, we can easily fi find that this kind of gap between the countries within Asia and within Europe, and also uh, the gap between the Asia and Europe is widening educational gap. So I, I, I will give you this presentation to all of you. So you don't need to type, yes. And so, as I mentioned before, why the educational gap between the two regions, that is Asia and Europe, as well as and within each regions and countries. So, the elimination of illiteracy still remains the main policy agenda by the substantial number of ASEM partners. And also, whereas it is noted that some ASEM partners reach it, the stage of universalization of higher education. Therefore, the ASEM partners and stakeholders should pay attention in order to reduce the educational gap and educational inequity between and within regions as they could become a critical factor to hinder a sustainable development and cooperation at ASEM regions. So we, s we propose book-based exchange and cooperation between Asia and Europe can be very helpful and can be productive for both regions. Of course, the countries within the regions so as you know very well, the MOOCs has a very, uh, very huge potential for the society, and in particular for higher education. So this is 
you cannot see this one. Too small. Already the ASEM partners acknowledge the potential MOOC which provide unlimited free access to higher, higher educate, high quality learning resources regardless of time and space. Under active support from governments, universities and other stakeholders, MOOC has been adopted as a new education strategy uh, exponentially in the two regions. For example, in Asia, uh, Korea, Japan, China, Thailand, Thailand and uh, Taiwan, and Malaysia, Indonesia, India, they are very actively involved in MOOC activities. And also, on the, on the other hand, the France, the Fun MOOC, and FutureLearn, and EADTU, European uh, Distance Learning kind of associations, they are actively involved in MOOC uh, diffusion in the regions. So, and, and then just look at the MOOC's growth and its impact. Uh, I think it's a tw two years, quite old, old data. I, I, I think now it's more than that, that numbers, that they, they data. So the rapid growth of MOOC will also have a considerable impact on connectivity between the two regions and also within the regions. As confirmed from the 11th ASEM summit held in Ulaanbaatar in 2016, digital connectivity will become an important leading factor in increasing economic and social connectivity and ASEP. And MOOC is a kind of exemplary case to show how to go over traditional barriers such as geographical distance to access quality teaching and learning opportunities and resources by eliminating the barriers of mobility, education can make a commitment to enhancing connectivity within ASEM. Also, uh, within regions, within Asia and within uh, Europe. So now, uh, this is a 2015 date data. Around 260 institutions in ASEM regions, they provide MOOC contents to the audience. Now I think more than that, I think. So the Nile and the Ministry of Education, the Korea, we propose uh, around three small projects. Uh, so the, all together, we entitle, we give the title of the ASEAN network, ASEM network of MOOC initiatives. So the, initi initi the initiatives consist of four small projects. So the f it has two pillar systems. The first one is dialogue, and the other is project-based uh, activities. So here is result-oriented acti activities, but with, uh, I say, uh, project-based activities. So dialogue side is uh, we propose ASEM book holders meetings on the two levels. First one is rector's conference and the other one is working level conferences. And the other result-oriented activities we propose the joint development and usage of ASEM book contents. The second one is guide, uh, we want to develop the guideline for MOOC content assurance, quality assurance. And the final one is uh, ASEM partner countries case study on MOOC learning outcome and recognition. So uh, governments and universities and other institutions, private institutions and other learners, they can participate in our project. So this is a more detailed uh, contents of our project. So just skip. Yes. So uh, our project uh, gives some benefits to all the stakeholders in higher education and lifelong learning. So just look at. Yes. So.
so and also our our, our proposal has give some benefits to ASEM education process. The first one is the most visible benefit of the program for the ASEM education pro process, increased exchange between the two regions. It is expected to facilitate mobility from Europe to Asia, from Asia to Europe. And the second is an, as an alternative learning places for those who live in areas without educational institutions or ICT environments. And third, thirdly, this program shares a common vision with the sustainable development goals in terms of using ICT to facilitate learning environments for the marginalized group, as we mentioned before. And finally, the ASEM education process could contribute to the accomplishment of the global agenda by the successful implementation of these programs. Yes, so partners involved, as I mentioned before, the higher education institutions, universities, and also government they can also participate in this uh, project. And also international, regional, and national organizations also participate uh, this, in this pro project. And also learners, they can give us some feedbacks to improve our project. Yes, this is, uh, just skip, please. And this is a timeline of our project. Uh, this coming March, uh, we will invite the government and delegations from the governments and institutions, universities, such as universities and international organizations, and bring, bring them together here in Bangkok. We talk about the contents and future directions of our projects. And then in May, there's a, there will take place the ASEM uh, educational meeting in Seoul, I think May 10th and 11th. Uh, we also invite the stakeholders, including government officials and uh, stakeholders. Uh, with, if it succeeds, our, our project will be the, one of the agendas in on ASEM educational meetings. And then after that, we will uh, implement our projects on the case case by case. Yes, and I think I need to show some more documents here. Can you see? The first project of ASEM Network of MOOC initiative is ASEM MOOC stakeholders meeting, meetings. The background here is during the first senior official meetings, someone for the sixth uh, ASEM education ministers meeting in November 2016, National Institute for Lifelong Education, Nile and the Minister of Education, we proposed the ASEM Network of MOOC initiative, as I mentioned before and relate, related tasks, including ASEM MOOC stakeholders meeting, co-development of ASEM MOOC and degree courses, and development of the guidelines for content development and management, and identifying best practice on social recognition and usage of MOOCs in the regions. And the, our proposal aims to ensure validity for adoption of the agendas related to ASEM networks of MOOC initiatives uh, initiative during the six ASEM education ministers meetings. And second, establish a stable project implementation basis and dynamics for the initiatives uh, successful start through encouraging participation of countries in the ASEM regions. So basic principle for the initiative is effective execution of the initiative through using the existing networks of exchange and corporations. Uh, in other words, the using Nile's existing in institutional networks on MOOCs in ASEM regions. 
And second is stable in implementation of the initiative through establishing close cooperative networks with other institutes, uh, institutions. In other words, establishing cooperative networks with other institutions related to the initiatives such as MOE and through mutual consultations and trust building. So the, the ASEM MOOC stakeholders meeting is the first task of our ASEM uh, networks of MOOC initiatives. So uh, I, I just hope you understand why we propose this uh, ASEM MOOC stakeholders meeting this coming March. And also uh, you understand our uh, kind of proposal for ASEM educational meetings. So thank you. Thank you so much, Professor. So I'm sorry again for the mistake earlier. <laughs> uh,